Hello, Tube. This is a big bag of motherboard goodness, I guess. This is one very special motherboard I got in the mail today. I had to uh, drop off a couple of packages at uh, the post office before I could actually take a look at this. This came in the mail, like I said. And this is a motherboard that is quite unique. It has a socket 370 right here and a slot 1 right there. It supports Pentium 2 processors and Pentium 3 CPUs here on the slot 1 and it supports socket 370 Celerons here on the 370 socket. What this install here is a Pentium 3 750. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. 750 megahertz. That's cool. They have a 733 laying around as well as a 1 gigahertz. I'll have to dig them up before I could actually uh, say something about it. Yeah, I don't have it in my drawer at the moment or in the, the storage box that I have located somewhere in my room. That's behind the bed anyway. I'm not going to bother with that. So it's a 750 megahertz uh, Pentium 3. We have three SD RAM slots right here. Probably going to put uh, 384 megabytes in there because I have a couple of 128s that I uh, don't use. They came out of my Power Mac G4. We have an AGP 4X slot here. I know it's AGP 4X because this is the chipset. This is a Via Apollo chipset. And I believe it's the 133 Pro or whatever they call it. It has the uh, 694X North Bridge, which means this has a better chipset with better support. It doesn't have onboard audio, but it does still have an ISA slot. Supports um, 133 megahertz uh, Pentium 3 FSB chips, which is nice because I only have 133 chips, pretty much. So it also supports 133 megahertz SD RAM, um, and of course AGP 4X and ATA 66, very important. But I believe the uh, regular 693 Northbridge also supports uh, ATA 66, but that doesn't really matter. So we have two IDE ports on the board. We have this Sony CMOS battery right here. I'm going to presume that the CMOS is dead. I have a couple of those laying around batteries for that, so that should be fine. Along the side here, we have a couple of headers. This is the front panel header, as far as I can tell. Yeah. There's actually a separate header here for the uh, hard drive LED, which is very weird. I don't know if you can actually see that. Are we going to get some focus on there? No, we are not. Okay. It says HD LED. Or LED, whatever you want to call it. I call it LED, anyway. Uh, so, apparently this thing has award bias. 1998 copyright, apparently. That is cool. So this board would be an early Pentium 3 board with very advanced features, but I'm going to guess it's about a 1999 board. In terms of I.O. on the back, we get two... PS2 ports, two USB ports, two serial ports in a parallel, and that's it. That's all you get. No video ports, no Ethernet port, nothing like that that we see these days, and not even onboard audio. But that's not an issue because I have a Sound Blaster AWE64, which I'm going to use with this. Because I'm going to turn it into some sort of retro gaming PC. That old HP Vectra of mine should have been that, but that onboard crystal audio just kept giving problems. Even if I put uh, when I put the uh, AW64 in there, things wouldn't quite improve. It would keep bugging it, even though I disabled it manually. But anyway, so we get an HP slot, four PCI slots, an ISA slot. There's a floppy header here, just above the first PCI slot, which is a very interesting position, but okay. Because it's not a really full-size ATX, it's, you know, it is full-size ATX in terms of expansion slots. But in terms of the overall width of the board, I mean, just, usually there's like this much extra, like my three fingers right here. It's like this much extra on the board. So they could fit the uh, IDE slots, or ports, I should say, around this side of the board. That's not the case here. It's just, you know, pretty slim line board. But it still managed to fit like two sockets on there. Of course, you can only use one at a time. But that's just fine with me. And what I really like is that the 
power, you know, the 20 pin power up here is on the top of the board instead of along the side. Which doesn't really flex the cable that much if you have a top mounted power supply like I have. So that's pretty cool. And so far I've been rambling for five minutes about a freaking motherboard. And I haven't even told you what the model number is. This is a Jetway 994AN-L motherboard. So look that up in case you're interested. And this is my, uh, this is the end of this overview video that I wanted to do on this board. And stay tuned for an actual build. And uh, I will actually explain what I'm going to do with this. Aside from turning it into a retro gaming PC, because there's a hell of a lot more updates and upgrades and whatever I'm going to do to it, and hardware configurations and shit. So stay tuned. And it's actually very probable that I will make the same video and post it today as well, just after this one. So stay tuned, and I thank you all for watching.